five mistakes that you need to avoid if you are planning to buy a property, especially if you are a first-time home buyer. What is going on guys? This is RJ Bautista, your local incredible realtor, EXP Realty. Today, I'm going to explain to you my 5 mistakes that you need to avoid if you are planning to buy a property, especially if you are a first-time home buyer. So if this is you, make sure to watch this video from this start until the end because this is very important and huge. But before I start this video, if you're new to my channel, welcome, please subscribe if you haven't done so. And the most important thing, you know that much that like button for me and share this video to all your friends family friend especially for those who's planning to buy a property or the first time home buyer so without further ado let's jump into it my number one mistakes that you need to avoid when you are planning to buy a property is spending a lot of money right let's say if you are planning to buy a property by next year you're starting to save some money starting from this year okay that's the most important why because at some point if you are buying a property this is a big financial decision right so this is a big financial decision you need to make sure that you are prepared before you jump into it all right so this is most important because if you are not prepared before buying a property what are you gonna do where are you gonna get your down payment for example even though we have like a down payment assistance when you are buying a property especially for those first time home buyer you will still need some money for for example closing costs you need to prefer for that well not everybody will give you a down payment assistant and also closing costs however in this market you can do that one but you still need some money to spend when you are planning to buy a property okay just for example for inspection if you are planning to buy a property you the buyer are responsible for that and you need pay for inspection for the property what you want to buy it doesn't mean like if you have like a down payment assistance or closing cost paid you don't have to spend anything you still have to spend something in your property that you would like to buy so that you will need some money which is safe up in your bank account okay that's the number one that you need to think about it or remember when you are planning to buy a property so start saving today if you are planning to buy a property by next year or the year after or a few more years after that's my number one tip for you to start doing right now so my second mistake that you need to avoid is like when you start saving a money for down payment you're just putting in your normal bank okay this is what you need to do you need to find a high yield interest bank okay there's a lot of of high yield interest bank out there that where you can search or where you can apply when you are saving some money because sometimes when you are saving your money in your normal bank account they will only give you maybe one percent or even probably two percent if you are lucky to get two percent in your normal bank however if you're going to search online which is i did today which i'm gonna tell you i've asked google or i type in google high high yield saving account okay so i have have, you can see here I have a lot of lists here which is for the high yield saving account okay there's a lot few banks that you could choose and they give you the best rate as well I will give you some of those okay so number one or my top one list here is the total direct bank and you know how much they are giving you for API or for interest rate which is 5.2 percent wow that is crazy high compared to one percent to your normal bank so would you rather put your money in a normal bank for 1% interest or would you rather keep this total bank or total direct bank for 5.20 API, APY or interest rate for, for your money? Which would you rather choose? I would rather choose the high yield interest rate, right? So instead of like getting 1%, you will get at least 5% of your money which you're saving for your future house, right? So that's times 5 from the normal bank, which is good. So I have a lot of here here like cfg bank which is giving you 5.17 percent apy and we also have like a vo bank which is giving you 5.15 percent apy west western state bank which is giving you 5.15 percent apy ufb direct is which is like 5.06 apy and city bank which is 5.05 percent apy so there's a lot of banks out here or out there where you can choose to 
put your money to get some more money back from the bank not just your normal bank so that when you are ready to buy your property you have some cash or reserve there where you can use or you can take out from that bank and use that for either your down payment or for your closing costs or for your inspection or whatever you need for your home buying process all right so that's my number two let's go to my number three now my number three is you don't know what is your price range that you're gonna buy a property okay so let's say you want to buy a property by next year however you don't know about your finances so you don't know the price of the property that you are going to buy by next year so you don't know any idea of how much you can afford of the property that you're gonna buy for next year or the year after okay so what I would do is I will grab a pen and paper and I will write down all my budgets for my expenses especially if you are renting so I would take off my rent money or my rent payment out of my budget because once you are getting a mortgage you don't have to pay rent anymore right so so what I will do is I will get like a pen and paper and I will put all my expenses there so once you get all your expenses there you will see like how much money that you can afford for your monthly payment for your mortgage so for example if you are living right now and you are paying for let's say hundred dollars for or electricity so and then you are paying for fifty dollars for the water and you are paying for your gas for your car you know monthly roughly around hundred dollars so if you're paying for your car insurance for another hundred dollars a month so you need to get all those money set up and so that you know how much money that you are spending monthly plus how much money that you are going to spend for your mortgage monthly as well okay so once you got those number in so you have like a range how much the price of property that you are going to buy so that you know how much monthly that you are going to spend so let's say for example if your expenses right now is thousand dollars without the mortgage or without the rent that you're paying right now or without the mortgage obviously not a home buyer yet okay so what you need to do is like the thousand bucks save that or put that in a way so that that's your expenses monthly and then you can play around how much money that you are you know remaining for your budget for your rent or for your mortgage so let's say you still have like two thousand monthly play around so you need to think about like the two thousand dollars monthly that's what's your payment for your mortgage so that you know how much mortgage that you can afford from month to month basis so let's say if you have two thousand dollars monthly so you need you just need times that one 12 and times that 230 years so that you can see how much money or how much the price of the property that you can afford for the mortgage or when you are planning to buy a property or when you are ready to buy the property i hope that makes sense okay so that's my number three so let's go to my number four you're not getting pre-approved with a lender okay so let's say if you are planning to buy a property next year okay pre-approving like pre-approval getting pre-approval now doesn't hurt your credit or doesn't hurt you if you're gonna get asked or if you're gonna ask your lender how much you can afford okay so by doing that it's better to ask a lender now and you tell them that hey lender can you pre-approve me normally the lender will pre-approve you and will give you how much money that you can afford for now and then they will tell you what you need to do to get your let's say if you have a low credit right now they will tell you how to fix your credit so when you are getting pre-approved again for next year when you're ready to buy they will tell you what you need to do okay so people think like i will just save 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 and i will do this but i'm not gonna get pre-approved now because i'm not gonna buy a property right now you can do that one but for my personal suggestion for my personal perspective i will get a lender who could pre-approve me now so that when i'm ready for next year you know who's gonna go for and also you you have an idea what you need to do before finally buying a property okay for example the lender is telling you you are pre-approved now for five hundred thousand dollars for a property so that's good right so you are you are pre-approved for five hundred thousand property as long as you are you know sustaining your income you don't have finance any property as long as you're not financing any cars or financing any furniture that will a credit so you're good so you know that from that lender give you or gave you the price of three hundred thousand or four hundred or five hundred thousand to buy a property so 
next year when you are ready to buy you know what you're gonna buy and also you have an idea from what price range that you're going to buy property as long as you follow what the lender said to you today and then by next year you're good to go okay i hope that makes sense so that's my number four let's go to my number five or my last one is for the mistake that people do is like getting a lot of credit cards yes that's correct some people said like i don't have enough credit i need to buy i need to get a credit card obviously to get my credit up so i need to use credit cards that's good okay but some people does they are getting too much credits or too much credit cards so what will happen is or what my suggestion is if you are getting a credit or if you don't have enough credit you are new here in the united states obviously you need to build your credit so that the loan officer once they check your credit you're good to go okay so my personal advice here is get at least three credit cards okay don't get more than three credit cards because that is not necessary okay some people does like okay I'm, i have like three credit card i need one more credit card to buy here so that you know get increase my credit and i need another one and suddenly after a while you're getting like 10 credit cards your credit file up you have a lot of debt that you need to pay because you're consuming a lot of credits or credit cards so for my personal perspective and for my personal tip is like only get three credit cards and that credit card make sure that you are going to use that credit card because if you are not gonna use those credit cards you have three credit cards and you still keep using your debit card which is good but remember you need to get your credit running so you need to make sure that that you are showing them that you are using your credit card and make sure that you are paying back them or you're paying them back on time because otherwise if you don't do that one obviously your credit will be low so you will get like a low credit so that's the video for today guys and make sure to remember these five things that you need to avoid before buying a property or especially if you are a first time home buyer at least you have an idea what to do before buying a property so if you have any question feel free to reach out to me text me call me email me feel free and i'll be happy to answer all your questions okay and also if you watch this video until this end comment down below first time home buyer so i can see how many people who's first time home buyer in this video and i will be happy to help you and also feel free to contact me if you need any more questions all right so until next time once again thank you for watching i'll see you on my next video peace What is my topic again today? <laughs> oh, the five mistakes that you need to avoid. Jeez. <laughs> Forget about that. Let's do it again, part two.